I am one of many, if not most, adults that can say, usually when the Christmas season comes around, I'm having a hard time getting into it. You know the feeling, Christmas comes around, just something feels a little bit empty inside, you're longing for like, a, usually usually something from your childhood, and then just no matter what you do, no matter where you go, something just feels like it's missing, just something feels like we're not in the Christmas spirit. Kind of arrived at this conclusion that um, like, you know, I just really wanted to try to stay more present, like just really trying to focus on like the simplicity of what makes Christmas so great. And, um, you know, I definitely think I'm onto something, but still just something, like, no matter what, no matter what, just something feels like it's missing. I should say too, Christmas isn't the only holiday uh, this time of year. Like, I'm not trying to say in this video what you should or shouldn't feel or celebrate. This video is for people who don't really feel in the Christmas spirit, but maybe want to and maybe hear, uh, you know, what I'm gonna try this year to really uh, re rekindle that for me. Earlier this year, I was learning about how important awe is. Like, A-W-E, like the, the emotion, awe. Awe is very basically described as experiencing something larger than yourself that you don't fully understand in the moment. But, I don't know, that doesn't even feel like it begins to sum up the times and places in which awe can be felt, but I just gotta run with it for now. As I was learning about awe and, uh, you know, trying to think about the times in my life that I've felt it, I think of really big moments, like being on a mountain, seeing the northern lights. But some of my most powerful memories of awe from childhood are associated with Christmas. It's Santa Claus! Like, Santa's the perfect example of uh, being awestruck as a child. Like, here's this incredible, wonderful, magical, jolly figure that is gonna bring you presents that, you know, you don't see him put it there. Yeah, and then you wake up in the morning, you're like, ah, oh my god, presents on Nintendo 64! And if you were raised religiously, the story of Jesus and his birth, like that whole thing, it might not be as impactful as Santa, but I remember the church services on Christmas Eve, like, it's so hard to describe, like just something just felt so different. Um, I would go to like the, the midnight service, it would get out around midnight and, and start at midnight. They pulled out all the stops. <laughs> It wasn't like a mega church or anything, but they had like this really top-notch uh, music director that was orchestrating the whole thing. And when I walked out and when it was, you know, midnight and, you know, especially when I was still a kid, like walking out of that church service, a lot of the times the snow is softly falling and, you know, I'm filled with the, filled with the Christmas spirit. It felt so magical. The one night of the year that just felt like magic. I'm sorry that I keep using that word, but like, come on, that's the only way I can describe it. But Santa aside, religion aside, even just things like the Christmas lights and the slowly falling snow and uh, just like the whole atmosphere was just so awe-inspiring for a kid. A little different, but still similar. I do think back to those elementary school, last days of school, of, you know, everything was just about the crafts and uh, having milk and cookies, watching uh, Christmas movies, and then of course the family parties. The food has been the same year after year. It's the only time of year that our big Polish family will get together and make some pierogies for everybody. It's called pierogi. It's pronounced pierogies, by the way. It's not pierogies, you f Learn some culture, sheesh. Just these events that were pretty consistent year after year, that's more than just events. That's more than just uh, doing the same thing year after year. That's, that's ritual. And ritual has always been uh, very closely connected with a feeling of awe. <laughs> Once I identified that, like, awe, like, that was the feeling. That, that was the feeling that I was feeling throughout all of this. That's the feeling that I wish I could go back to year after year. Like, for me at least, like, I, I really think that's what's been missing. And, like, the good news is that um, from what I learned about awe, there are 
intentions, there are way, there are things that we can do to tap into this feeling of awe, especially like finding awe in what we might just consider mundane at this point in our lives. The most recommended exercise for tapping into a feeling of awe is called an awe walk. In short, it's encouraged that you go outside, take a walk through your neighborhood, take a walk through something familiar and just like use your senses to just notice these things that you haven't really taken the time to notice before maybe, or at least not this intensely. I do wonder if I can use that paradigm this year to feel more connected with Christmas, to feel more like I've tapped into that feeling of awe that I haven't felt since childhood, or at least not that intensely. Like, what if my Christmas awe walk is just walking around my neighborhood, um, I love walking outside when the snow is softly falling, like at nighttime especially, and then the glow of everybody's Christmas lights. And you know, do, that activity isn't nothing that I haven't done in years past, but I really do wonder if now I know what I'm looking for, that I that the feeling that I'm searching for is awe, that I've felt it before, and that, you know, maybe through this I can really seek out and be in the moment with the simpler memories that I have from Christmas time when I was a kid. Like, I loved my hometown's decorations. I loved just staring at the snow softly falling. And I really don't think I'm too far gone to be able to rekindle that feeling of awe in those simpler moments. As I said before, ritual and tradition is another really powerful way to unlock a feeling of awe if you're paying attention to it, I think. If your head's in the right place with it. Just the act of... Why is it that every time I leave the house to film something, something goes wrong with one of my microphones, the only microphone that I decide to bring along that day? We're resorting to this now. Where was I? At least personally for me, ritual and tradition is another way that I feel like I can tap into this feeling of awe. No, I'm not talking about some neo-poetic men's movement bullshit ritual. I'm talking about literally just going to your family's house, going to grandma's house, having a nice home-cooked meal made with love year after year, just sharing the magic of Christmas. <clears throat> this is gonna be the hardest for me to talk about because I'm still kind of in the process of reframing spirituality for myself. But like every time that I learn about the roots of Christmas, whether like in the Christian tradition or even just like the winter solstice traditions that started so much, I have always just been so awestruck by like these thousands of year old traditions, but also these stories that go back thousands of years. I feel connected to the awe that they inspired in me as a kid. I feel connected to the awe that they inspired in uh, thousands of generations before me. I feel connected to the awe of this greater mystery of life and uh, spirituality. And that is just incredible and humbling and beautiful and awe-inspiring to me. So you may be thinking at the time of this upload, um, you know, we're just barely into the Christmas season. I haven't proven to myself if any of these things will actually make me feel uh, closer to the Christmas spirit, closer to those feelings of awe from childhood. I really don't know. Like, this is all just speculation on my end, but... Um, I have been thinking about this concept for quite a bit now, and I kind of decided to give it a little bit of a test run in the fall and around Halloween. The only thing I love more than softly falling snow is fall foliage. The only thing that can possibly compete with Christmas decorations are Halloween decorations. It's the only other time of year besides Christmas time that I feel intimately connected with a younger version of myself, even just through the weather patterns and through the decorations and just the fun traditions that come along with it. Just these past couple weeks throughout October, I have just been taking walks around my neighborhood and just really taking the time to 
notice the fall foliage, the colors, the crisp chill, all of the amazing decorations that my rich neighbors put up, the taste and the feeling of a pumpkin spice coffee on a cold fall morning. And yeah, just being able to focus on using my senses to really tap into what it is that I love about fall, to tap into what I've loved about this time of year ever since I was a kid. Finding that presence, finding that awe has gotten me closer to rekindling that feeling from childhood than anything has before this time time of year. Not only it simplified the joys of this time of year, but it amplified them for me. And if this is how I felt for spooky season, then I see a lot of promise in intentionally seeking awe during the holiday season is what is going to rekindle that feeling for me. And hey, like, you know, this is the first year that I'm really trying to tap into this. This is the first year that I'm really trying to seek this out. I have a lifetime ahead of me to really figure this out for myself, to figure out like what it are what what are the ways that I'm going to feel connected to myself the most around Christmas time? What are the ways that I'm going to feel most intimately connected with that warmth and that love and that feeling of magic from childhood? <laughs> I'm never gonna feel exactly the same as I did as a kid. And you know, I don't really want to. I think those memories are great. Those memories are pure. I don't wanna touch them. I don't wanna try to recreate them anymore. I knew that staying in the present moment was, you know, a really good first step into reconnecting with this part of myself. But I think now that I really know what I'm looking for, that what I'm looking for is a feeling of awe. And there are proven ways that we can feel awe in our adult lives if we just put our right intentions to it. I think that's gonna really reframe Christmas for me. I think it's gonna feel easier for me to get into that Christmas spirit now more than ever. Happy holidays, everybody, and thank you so much for watching.